बोले बाबा की जय जटम्बे मात की जय हरिया कंदश्वरी मात की जय Thank you for being with us today. Today I'm actually in Harakon, Visha Mahadam, in India. I'm so grateful to be back in Bob's home. I'm here with my beloved friend Tara, who's lived in Harakon many times and has watched many of these shots on. And turns out she has some questions to ask herself. So we'll see what happens. Go ahead, Tara. So oh, in case you don't know, I'm Ramoti. <laughs> and I live at the head of the Universal Ashram in Creston, Colorado, halfway around the world, and met Babaji in 81, and I love to come back here every year. And I really love to meet you physically for the first time, since I, I really was very much inspired by your all online satsang and work, and so I'm really happy. So I want to ask you, when you hear the name Heratan Babaji, what is the first thing that comes up in your heart? Love. Love. Always love. And is that the main message you received from him? Yes. Love. Love. We're all doing, you know. Well, first of all, we just heard from Gomara yesterday. The ashram is my body. But we also know the whole world, the whole cosmos is his body. So how can we not love every part of it? Even the mischievous parts that might be problem, you know, even the, um, we just, I know most of the time I can remember that we've been here so many lifetimes and we're doing the best we can. Sometimes we don't do a good job. So, but why would I not love somebody even though they're being hateful or I more have compassion, compassion and love and mm -hmm. patience. And in that situation, do you need to make certain distance to that person, even you have compassion in order to protect yourself? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, still, we're in this world to make, be, be discerning. Yeah. I saw this with Papa, you know, that he would be very strict with people, and so we have, I heard one story about Sheila, Sheila Devi, one of the early... Yeah, I heard about her. Yeah, Shami Kapoor's sister-in-law, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, one time somebody brought Babaji a nutcracker, this thing that she used, and he said, put your finger there, and he, put, and he pressed down on the nutcracker, hard and hard, and tears started crying, and finally she said, I can't stand it anymore, and he said, why did she wait so long to, you know, it's like... Why you didn't take your finger out? Exactly. And why were you putting that finger? And, and I have that feeling that he's teaching us common sense at exactly. the same time. Like you have to love all the universe and at the same time you have to have a common sense. Like you have to follow him completely even in a mad situation and at the same time you have to have common sense. And this kind of balance in yeah. sadhana is tricky because it could be translated or misunderstood. That you're not nice or you're too rough. And yeah. All these kind of things. Yeah. There's a saying that I've taught parenting classes for many years. This mm -hmm. idea of being kind and firm at the mm -hmm. same time. Mm -hmm. So if you really love, you can say no. Mm -hmm. No, this is not the way it's going to happen at the ashram here or whatever yet the situation is. Yeah, yeah. Being very clear. Yeah, that is a special art to to be loving and to say something that is uncomfortable to somebody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love it. It's because we're afraid they won't like us. Yeah. But it's okay. That's also that's our choice. Our choice is to love people and be compassionate and understanding. But like you said, also clear and firm. Mm -hmm. So is this something you learned in more than 30 years living in the ashram with so many people coming, going, doing seva, maybe going through different processes? Yeah, uh, yes, of course. Yeah. And you know that from here also. Yes. Some people come and they just, you know, they don't want to follow the program. And that's okay. 
But you can not follow the program elsewhere. <laughs> not yeah, yet. yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is one of the things. And then uh, uh, things like what is, you know, for me was the experience to live in community for the first time with the people that I didn't kind of choose, pick. No, I didn't make my walls and my system. I'm exposed and they are exposed to me and I'm exposed to anyone. And then uh, these so many people with different backgrounds and different upbringings yeah. where nationality is not a problem. The, the thing is that the differences in, in thinking and in upbringing and in attitude and in culture are very different. Exactly. And then you face things that you could not imagine Right, and so uh, then we we kind of can really exercise what is the right attitude with this Babaji's love at the same time and with our limitations and the, with the limitations of that other person. Yeah, for sure. And so, what what have you learned from this? I've learned <laughs> to repeat the name of God as often as possible, because so really sometimes it just seems impossible. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'm just almost about a half, about a half, and so I, I do. Uh, and I try to relax and not take it personally, whatever's happening to me. I mean, and I, I don't, I make lots of mistakes, and sometimes I, I'm not nice. Uh -huh. uh, but, um, the name of Baba, the name of God, helping me stay centered so much. Yeah. But it's true. We have so many people from India that come to our ashram in Colorado. Mm -hmm. And I've learned, uh, you know, more about their culture, you know, what's important to them. And yeah. the same from, you know, Thailand. Europeans are very different than Americans in many yeah. ways, depending on what country they're from, and I've learned that too. So it's their expectations and my expectations for sure that need to be, um, for me, I just need to, once again, see them as, try to see them as living the best they can and doing the best they can, but it's hard. It's hard to live with people. Tell me about it. Yeah, well, yeah. that's what I want to ask you. What is the hardest part of your sadhana with Babaji? Like we are doing meditation, then we are doing puja, then arti puja, then fire puja, you know, then karma yoga, then so what is, like then we are with people and uh, organizing festivals and all this kind of stuff. Uh, what would be the hardest sadhana for you? Getting too tired. <laughs> Not kidding. I'm, I guess I'm quite attached to sleep still. And so sometimes, you know, these, these things require so much attention yes. and work. And so it's been a hard side now for me to learn to trust in Baba, really it comes down to. Mm -hmm. Because if I'm, you know, worried too much about this, and who's bringing the flowers, and who's going to clean this, and who's going to do that, which are helpful things to do in community is to have, but I don't have to do it all. And this person that might be doing it then, because I'm not doing it at all, may do it differently. That's hard to watch somebody do it differently. Differently. Exactly. And sometimes may not be up to my standards. Yeah. Maybe it's just different. Maybe it's better. Uh huh. Uh -huh. So letting go of the feeling that I got to do it all. Mm -hmm. For sure, because it is. It is huge. And then I get too tired. And when I get tired, then I get cranky. Yeah, it's not easy to control thoughts, emotions also. Yeah. When, when I'm tired. tired right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. For so, me also. It's so it's been a big blessing. Um, up to 10 years ago, I just lived in the dorm with everybody else. Mm -hmm. And so that's, I had a room, but you're in sharing the bathroom with all the people. And sometimes in the dorm there would be 40, people staying, 50 people during Nambaratri and things mm -hmm. like that. And then, you know, I love people. Mm -hmm. But all day you're, you know, people are coming to you. Tara, where's this? Tara, yeah. <laughs> tell me about this. <laughs> and finally like, ah, 
to the point like Tara, I forgot where is my room. Can you please <laughs> yeah, have exactly. it? Can you please lead me to my room? <laughs> okay. So, so you know, to be in a dormitory where you're sharing the bathroom. So mm. it's one woman's bathroom in the dorm and one man. So uh. you know, I'd almost not want to go to the bathroom because I know I would see more people. Uh -huh. So ten years ago, I got my own hermitage that has a little bathroom in it. Ago. So. Yeah, and that, that was like a lifesaver because and I can go there and just be shocked and not, not say a word and really have, you know, eight, ten hours to, to chill out. <laughs> and how it happened that you stayed in ashram so long since you also have a family? Okay. And, uh, and, and I see people coming and going, usually really, uh, it's coming and going. And then if they stay, there is a number of years after which they again go. Mm -hmm. uh, and now when somebody is such a long time in the ashram, how that happened? How much was it planned? How much was it spontaneous or how so, it happened? So when we started the ashram in 86, yeah, uh, my children were both in high school with them, and I stayed four years. It was very difficult. And I tell anybody that's starting an ashram, be gentle with one another. Be kind, because it's very. Everybody has their own opinions, and there's, you know, like should we wear sorry full time? Should we be eating Indian food? Should we, you know, how strict are we in this? And everybody has a different style too. Yes. And as first four years, there was so much of you're too strict. You're not strict enough. You're not following. <laughs> you know, and it, it's very hard to first of all the work involved. You know. And then on top of that, to hear this. Mm -hmm. It's too much. Yeah. So really, I left after four years and took five years to regain my health, actually. I was uh -huh. actually very exhausted. Exhausted, and even to the point of illness and so. So, um, so excuse then, me, I would like just to stop a little bit there. Building an ashram, what is important? <laughs> really, because, you know, when I was, uh, I just... Uh, came to Herakan one time, before that I had Babaji in my heart and connection, but I was not in the community of Herakan. Then, then suddenly I wanted to open ashram in my country because there is no ashram in my country. What is your country? Serbia. Serbia? Serbia. Oh, I didn't even know that. And I was starting to think immediately about that, thinking that it's like easy thing, you know, I will do sure. Arti Puja, <laughs> some people will come and we will say, let's do the ashram, and then what we will do? Ashram, and, and, and then I discovered that people that come for RT, first people came that I never thought will come, not the ones that I thought will come. Like, I'm completely people that were not in that kind of sadhana, just arrived and, and really enjoyed. And secondly, nobody really had neither time or energy or even thought to even help with RT preparation, not to mention any kind of ashram. And then I, 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 I wrote to Aung Banerjee and he said, you don't try to, to make ashram by yourself because you will just over exhaust yourself mm -hmm. and you'll do nothing. Mm -hmm. You uh, It should be organically. Mm -hmm. There should be people that will all participate and it will slowly grow, start from small and then it will slowly grow and that is the only way you can make the ashram. And then I went to visit Holland Ashram, German Ashram and I saw this in Holland Ashram seemed to me like a really well established. Mm -hmm whatever problems they think they have, but it is really working very well like a, from the visitor perspective, and many people are coming mm -hmm. uh, happily, mm -hmm. always, and I realize that there are 300% devoted people that are like triangle, you know, like materialization, and it's 300% devoted people with mm -hmm. time, with money, with everything. And that that is, and I thought maybe that is like necessity in order to even think about ashram. But but I would like to hear what what you really know because I can only think, and you really know something about it. I don't know. I can tell you when I was president of the American Samaj, I became president in 1984, mm -hmm. and I started doing a newsletter. We were doing some tours. And this was all very nice, but I would ask people, would you write something for the newsletter? Well, you know, because it's boring just to hear my story all the time. You know, yeah, 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 we'll get 
Do you have that? Oh, no. oh yeah, yeah. You know, just mm -hmm. seeing that in a huge country like America, yeah. where actually not that many people met Babaji. It was mm -hmm. a long trip from America here. Yeah. And not as many as Europeans seem to be more clustered in areas. When Muniraj and Sastraji came um, to, to Kresham, they came in 85 and then in 86 again. 86 was when they were voting, should we build an ashram here? Because we were being offered some land and a beautiful place that was already very spiritually attuned with all the spiritual centers. I voted no. I didn't think we were ready to build an ashram. Mm -hmm. I don't think we were. I certainly mm -hmm. wasn't. <laughs> so um, I, I, I think what you say is very true. Um, so I guess the five years I was away, different things happened, and the Samaj ran it. But anyways, um, I think by the time I came back in 95, people were more appreciative. They realized exactly what you said. Mm -hmm. There's not many people um, that have the wherewithal to devote their life to living in the ashram. They might have family, they have to make a living, maybe they've got elders, or whatever, yeah. or they just don't like to live about yeah, yeah. So it. Yeah, so it's With not, people they didn't choose. And it's, it's, yeah, it's every, you know, it's, it's the right timing, and I'm sure it's karma, mm -hmm. and things like that, mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. um, so people, I think, started realizing that, you know, I don't want to live at that ashram, so we're going to be appreciative of the people that do live there. <laughs> and when that happened, I think things switched more. Maybe when you left, they realized what you actually did oh, and how, just, how valuable that was. You and people that were exactly. there. Because, you know, the people that are in ashram, they just look like managing something. They just look like the dominant, uh, pressy, bossy people. Uh, the moment they leave, you start to see what qualities they had in order to be there and what was their real contribution and that so many people just wouldn't do it for whatever reason. And then it, it, that seems more important than the impression of bossing because what other, how will they manage if they would not, right? I, I love what you just brought up. Can I segue to something? You help me remember to come back. Okay. Because um, I often... I hear more times than I wish I would hear about a particular ashram, or even a person, but um, you know, that they're very narrow, or they're very this or that. Mm -hmm. And I want to say, it's, and what's the good aspects about them? You know, yes. just like you're saying, yes, you can exactly. pick out one aspect that they're bossier than you would like, and maybe they are a little bit power hungry or something. We're all human beings. Yeah. We have our ego. Yeah. But, you know, instead, like you said, if you can look at, oh, but they did, you know, build that, those rooms, and they did, you know, bring in the people to do it, and they, they have these qualities. It's so much more beautiful to so see everybody's larger qualities. Mm -hmm. And sure, we might talk, yeah. you know, one on one. So, so I think the other thing that happened while I was away is that. I honed a lot of skills. That means I, I became a mediator. Uh, you know, for five years I was away from the ashram. I, uh -huh. I taught parenting classes. I became a mediator. I um, did all kinds of de um, development work. I what do you mean mediator? A mediator is somebody you hire to sit between two disputing parties. Oh, okay. Good, Good idea. Psychologically. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, wonderful. Uh -huh. yeah, yes. Are you doing that in the ashram now also? We do it every day. Okay. <laughs> I mean, not, not, to know. not formally. No, not, yeah, no, not, not formally. No, no. I, I don't say formally. But before, I would do it between school districts. And, you uh -huh. know, when I was away from the ashram, I was head of this thing called the um, San Luis Valley, um, San Luis Valley Youth Coalition. Mm -hmm. And so we bring all the uh, agencies that work with families and youth together. And sometimes I would sit with them and help them between social services and medical health, the judicial, this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, 
So those were helpful. I became a public speaker. I had my own radio show. Oh. So all these kind of things. I just mm -hmm. love learning how to run meetings so that everybody gets heard, everybody's respected. And so being able to do that was so important. But but I do feel what you first thought and Elope said also is like start with arches. Mm -hmm. yeah, and start and with the center with something small. Uh, maybe even just your home. Yeah, yeah. You know, well, my center was in my home. Right. Yeah, it's it's home. home. So you yeah. don't have an overhead, you don't have yeah. to, and you're just loving. Yeah. And if you have a few other people that love it. And the time is right in their life. Exactly. Also. There is a karma in the right time uh -huh. for people to come and something it will happen or it will not happen, which is also okay. Yeah. Right? Because it cannot happen by will or force or wish or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. Mostly happens by Baba's grace. Yeah, by Baba's grace. Baba's grace. But being able to sit together mm -hmm. and you say that, well, you know, I don't like the way this is going, you know, I would do it this way, you know, so that we can hear one another. Mm -hmm. and talk about our differences of opinion and mm -hmm. like that without aggression or mm -hmm. anger, mm -hmm. but listening and coming up because two people have two different ways of doing things. Instead of like this, if you're like this, then you often come up with a, a new way that is really beautiful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Often, right? Yes. Because it, uh, I had a feeling in these situations, what we have also, that people just didn't communicate clear enough. So they didn't really, they just had their part of the story. They didn't really have the chance to hear the other side's complete story. And then after that communication happens, then some creation happens, right? I can tell you in one school, while I was away from the ashram, uh, they asked me to come in and do a mediation mm -hmm. between the principal and you know all those people and the teachers. So you have the, the staff and the, and the teachers and they, were, they could not work together. So it was so difficult that they couldn't even start the school year. Because every time they talked, it was like this about weight, how much they were going to pay and all these kind of things. So they asked me to come in and I'm like, oh boy, <laughs> that's a lot of people out there. <laughs> the principal, actually, superintendent actually told me, I'm afraid to walk down the hall that somebody might come up and stab me in the back uh -huh. or hurt me or something. Okay. And I'm going, do I really want to do this? Uh -uh. Anyways, um, but really, the, the beauty of we all sat, you know, and I set the guidelines that you don't interrupt, you listen, uh -huh. and people share it. And they got to hear exactly what you said, the other side of the story. That they didn't have in their mind and they exactly. were not. Exactly. The, now they see more from the superintendent or the principals, you know, mm -hmm. and they, and they, they got to see all the staff and the teachers were really not listened to. And so um, I got a call from the superintendent and he said, he said, you know, um, this time we, in one meeting, we organized for the whole coming year. Wait, wages and, you know, what we're going to do, what we're going to do. Just because they learned some skills of listening openly and not interrupting. If anybody interrupt, I said, oh. But you know, since you are very active online and everything, wouldn't it be wonderful to make one video of a guideline of the mediation for our ashrams? <laughs> what do you think about it? Let's see. Like these rules that somebody who, you know, each ashram has a person that people trust most, that could be this mediator, but this person has to have, get some skills mm -hmm. to, uh, to, to say, like, these are the rules, this is how we do this, so that there is a good, safe environment mm -hmm. uh, for that would be lovely. Um, and I have to say that different um, people have different, I guess, once again, it comes into styles too. Um, Raghavir asked me to do this for some of the ashrams, and uh -huh. I did write out, but they didn't get very far. Okay, maybe so you should I don't be a mediator <laughs> <laughs> then. <laughs> now, I'm, now I'm trying to not do anything. Okay. <laughs> if somebody called me to mediate, you know, even in a school district, that would be better. Okay, yeah, it's not 
time for that anymore. No, my, now my son to yeah. reflect. And well, not so. I'm mean, still working a lot at the ashram. Yeah. But just focus on the ashram only, uh -huh. and, and uh -huh. so that I can stay there and help as much as possible. So, life at the ashram. So then, your further question was, why did you stay so long? Yeah. Because I love it. That's it. Yeah, just like you here, I'm sure. You yeah. Know, you love. We love Ava. We love the work. Yeah, I love it. I just know that there is karma and that I have no idea about my future. I don't either. People, yeah, that, that people you, ask. you have that feeling all the time. Like, I have no idea about my future. I don't know where I will be. I don't know how long I will stay, but I just love it and, and, and I just feel to stay. Yeah. Is that feeling? Yeah. People ask me how long will you be here forever? I don't know. It's all yes. up to Baba. Yes. It's totally up to Baba. Yes. You know, and uh, I trust. I trust in Baba more and more and more of the ashram. It goes quite well. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's Baba's grace. Mm -hmm. And all the people, there's just so many wonderful people that come to the ashram. And there's challenging people too, and there's really rough times. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't, it's moment to moment I love being at the ashram. I don't know, it makes sense to me. Yeah. The life of an ashram is so reasonable. I call it, yeah. you know. How, how, how do you think that with your ashram life, you're giving contribution? You know, Babaji had these big words to heal the planet, to do seva for all the world, to, you know, these kind of things, it's like the big goals. And I was wondering how you feel your mission or how you feel that you are contributing because people have some thoughts that we in the ashram are only because of ourselves being comfortable with only self-reflection running away from the world and not doing much like what you do when you are in that ashram close and there is all the world there and your family and so on and you are not there and it looks like oh you're in some hiding passive position. So how, how you feel? Um, so first of all, I don't think Babaji, you know, he wanted us to run away from the world. And helping to run an ashram is not running away from the world. Mm -hmm. It's placing yourself in the middle of so much. And most people, you know, that come to the ashram, they, they acknowledge that. Like, mm -hmm. how can you stay here and, and have so much going on? People coming, people calling, people questioning, people. And then, you know, then you still have a corporation. We're a nonprofit corporation to do that. Books to do, meetings to hold, you know, minutes to write. You know, there's mm -hmm. all kinds of things to do, newsletters to write, so there's millions. But, Hermanand has lived there about 28 years now. He said it so beautifully. The first time he came to RT at the ashram, he wasn't living there yet. He just attended as an interested person. Mm -hmm. He said he could tell what was going on there influenced the whole cosmos. Okay. And I, the same with the fire ceremony every morning. I know it makes a difference. Mm -hmm. You can't. I, you know, because I'm not, not out there picketing for this right or that right or something like that, or, you know, I'm not so smart that I can, you know. But there's many people who are doing wonderful things, and many of them aren't devotees. I'd like to interview those people and mm -hmm. see how many ways people are serving Babaji. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be in an ashram. You don't even have to sing arty morning and evening. Mm -hmm. You just, Baba said, What's needed now are good human beings. Yeah. Good human beings. There are so many good human beings doing amazing things. I feel like there's so much amazing things going around, and yet they just don't get press. I'm very hopeful. Mm -hmm. Baba see, Babaji said, until there's a change of heart, there'll be no change. Mm -hmm. And I feel like this is possible. The Katanji doesn't have to be so horrible if we can all open up our hearts and help one another. Uh, I'm optimistic because there are many people helping. So I don't know if that answers the, the yeah, question. Yeah, now, but yeah, no, yeah. I do. And I think we make a difference in the world with every person we interact with. Every person. Mm -hmm. The 
run in the grocery store and a little child is crying, you know, no, I'm not going to interfere with, but I can look at that child and look them in the eye and maybe send them to prayer. I pray for people a lot. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. that Baba, whatever we call Mother God, you know, helps us so much. Mm -hmm. But there's also a lot of stuff in there. I'm not going to deny that. Yeah. I weep sometimes mm -hmm. at the suffering. Yeah. But this is what I think I was telling you this on the train about when I was away for five years. I said I taught uh, parenting classes. Mm -hmm. and I was teaching for mental health and social services, people who had lost their families because of neglect or abuse. And I, would, I said I want to first go to their families to their home to meet them personally, so they, they know I'm not judging them, I just want to give them a happy hand if I can. Mm -hmm. And um, and it was and it was very discouraging with some people because they would take two steps forward and then because there's such a pool of old habits yeah. that are passed on generation by generation mm -hmm. by generation. Just slap the child or abuse the child or get drunk so that you don't have to deal with the pain that's in your heart, you know. So, um, I remember thinking one time, um, toward, yeah, like toward the end of those five years when I was gone, it's like, you can change people's behavior, but unless there's a change of heart, there really be no substantial change. So mm -hmm. I can learn that it's better that I speak kindly, but if if my heart still has this you know, gaping wound in it, then when the child acts out and I'm out of control, I'll you know, abuse them or something like that. Mm -hmm. so, so for me, a place that there can be a change of heart are these special places that are filled with love and you know, beautiful nature mm -hmm. and good people and the grace of me, a Baba and Mother and the practice. It's the practice. Mm -hmm. And the Karma Yoga. I mean, Baba just gave us such a practical do your work, repeat the name of them. You can take that anywhere, whether you're a mother or a father or a businessman or a painter or a plumber, everywhere. And it makes a difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm a believer and I'm an optimist. <laughs> As you can tell. So I understood that Dwayne is teaching karma yoga without thinking about the result. Like you do the best you can and you accept any kind of failure or, or the result that you didn't want or you know that you didn't really wow. want because you are not really the one that is doing this uh, yes. this work and. Uh, Right now we're busy. Thank you. And, uh, Later. Um, um, yes, I mean, that's, that's, that's the huge answer. That is what Baba answer. taught us. And I'm not very good at it. I have to tell you, if I write a newsletter and I don't get at least two accolades from people, <laughs> I'd be like, oh, you know, so, you know, I'm still stuck on. And, you know, at the ashram and people do their work, I probably am to, you know, say, oh, that's so good, thank you so much. And, you know, but I'm just a human being in the best I can. But, but it's true. If we really can do our work and just realize, and that's for, you know, Om Namah Shaddai, the, the mantra. Om Namah Shaddai. Sure. Sells me so much. So that when I start thinking about, you know, oh, did I do a good job? Did, did Sally like me? This person liked me? Did I? Whatever. Then I can just say, sometimes. Mm -hmm. They stop it. Mm -hmm. oh, should I, oh, should I, what's next, Bob? Mm -hmm. What's next? Like you said, I did the best I could. Yeah. And how we become better persons, that is uh, because we have all different karmas and we can even do the same sadhana. But you can see you know, some people getting really stuck in changing, some people changing very rapidly, or so we cannot compare 
karma with karma. But uh, what is the pro what was your inner process of I, I say inner process of becoming a better person? Because for me, it took a lot of seeing my weaknesses, and I was always thinking, uh, why these big saints many times said that they feel they are the worst person in the world? I, I never understood that. And then, then I, I start realizing, because when you're focused on your sadhana and yourself, you see only your mistakes and your weaknesses. You don't have time to see other people's whatever. That, that was my uh, experience about what they said, because I never really understood how can saint say such a thing. And so I was wondering how did Babaji sadhana help you to become a better person, to see your dark side, to see your qualities, to accept it, to then reflect it on other people. How that process happens. <laughs> I don't know if it's happened. <laughs> it's, a pro it's a work in process for sure for all yeah. of us. You know, sometimes yeah. I feel I feel about this grace in my body a lot. Yeah. Sometimes. And when I do, it's um, everything is easier for sure, and I could just keep walking my path. Yeah. But then there's the times, the darker times, I guess you'd call it, when I wake up with a very critical mind, a negative mind, and mm -hmm. seeing, like you said, all the faults in everybody else. Mm -hmm. And it's just, I don't like it. Mm -hmm. Not where I want to be. But you just continue your sudden and wait until it. I, I take my next. I take my next steps, and I try to really increase the mantra. Yeah, and then, but you have to be in action, right? Do you, uh, how you how you balance action while you are not in a good mood, and you know you are not in a good mood, but you need to react or you need to act. Okay. So what what is the best way? For me, it's to do my 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 sadhana, my, my work. So your, just your, take, your, take one step after another, put one foot in front of the other, even though it's feeling heavy mm -hmm. or not. So, and I don't know. I, I I also sometimes also use the mantra Om Aim Klim Chum Daya Vache as mm -hmm. reading uh, Saraswati Sachidananda Sri Ma is the, the Swami the Swami he wrote a beautiful. Um, translation of the Durga Sapsati or the Chandipat. Mm -hmm. And in it he talked about this mantra. Um, I mean, it's calling all the all the energies of Ma. But it's also slashing away, you know, annihilating uh -huh. the aspect. Yeah. Uh -huh, I do know that. Vache, one who cut off the head yeah. of Chamunda. Is that, yeah, so one of the big egos. Chamunda is a demon? Yeah. Okay, I didn't know that. Chamunda so, Okay. So, yeah, so this is what he says is very helpful when we're stuck. Uh-huh. And, uh -huh. and we, you know, we were, Sashaji was very keen on having a say a lot during the Navratri time, mm -hmm. when a lot comes up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to do purification, mm -hmm. even before Navaratri, a few days, especially when everybody is deadly tired from preparing for Navaratri. Uh, sure. And then the energy comes to purify also at the same mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, so definitely I look to um, keep taking my steps and mm -hmm. doing my mantra. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's a simple path. Simple path. It's not yeah. easy, but it's simple. Yeah, that, that's yeah. nicely said. Yeah. And there's not a lot of lights and bells, you know, it's yeah. just like, here I go again. I had a feeling in Babaji Path that, you know, whenever I get to the ecstasy and I had this incredible experience, that something must happen to ground me that is unpleasant. Mm -hmm. That Babaji is working, never working in this way, never letting me to stay in ecstasy for a very long time. Mm -hmm. it's, it's I mean, there's an ungrounded ecstasy, just, but there's, I think there's also a, a very stable, just uh, happiness, peacefulness inside. 
Mm. That's yes. good. That's even more interesting to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a blessing. And and that one doesn't need to change. Mm -hmm. um, what probably happens for me is my ego takes over a bit. So then Baba is always the master, both when I was with him and now. You know. Do you have any ambition like some people have? I have ambition to get moksha, I have ambition to be a saint, I have ambition, like I'm doing this so much, so I, I, I will become one day this and this. No. What, what is your ambition? <laughs> Uh, not ambition, but kind of feeling what you would wish for, spiritually. To be a kind, loving person. Yeah, like it's interesting. Yeah, many women say that. Yeah, yeah. Just to be kind and um, I guess in the prayer actually is that um, Baba that I feel and experience and trust your love, your guidance and protection, moment to moment. Mm -hmm. Within me, all around me. And so I wanted to ask you a little bit about pujas, because I love Arti Puja, I love Fire Puja, I love it all. And I'm interested in how you got into Puja, and uh, also, what are the, let's say, some challenges, and what are the beauties of being Pujarini? Mm -hmm. With Arti Puja and with fire, is there a difference for you and how, how you, you feel that? Well, I can tell you that when I came to Harakon, and I would say more Harakon, because first I met Babaji in 81 in Wapi. And there was a big celebration going on, and so it was all, and I didn't know anything. I was like, whatever, you know, of course I, I saw Baba and I felt that love, and that's what I loved. Then I came to Harakon for three months in the summer and brought my children with me, and um, then, that's when I started seeing the, the Pujari and the temple and everything like that. And I loved it so much, I went to Babaji and I said, Baba, May I learn to be a pujari? Mm -hmm. And he said, "You go to Gora Devi." So I went to Gora Devi because she did a little puja in her room. But it was so simple. Mm -hmm. She had she just had one incense, a flower, a fruit, some water, yeah. and basically offered well, a very beautiful thing to teach me. Because sometimes mine are very simple, and, and I encourage other people to do something and maybe start simple. Yeah. Because if you start with a big hour program every day, it's like unlikely you're going to keep up with it. But if you do something simple mm -hmm. every day, I mean, it just makes sense. God is coming to your house. What are you going to do? Can but you? excuse me, uh, uh, if I'm well informed, you're doing Arti Puja every day. And you're doing fire puja every day. Uh, I no longer am doing the. Um, <laughs> or you were doing for many, many years. Yeah, many, many so years. many pujas Just per good. day that are absolutely not simple. <laughs> Excuse me, but no, like no, no, arti no. puja, only dressing multi like for one and a half hours, which you said. Fire puja that takes a preparation and all these yeah. things. So you did like, did you do two arti pujas per day in the fire ceremony every day? For many, many, many I, years. I wasn't doing the fire ceremony every day in those days. Uh huh. In those days, okay. We didn't always do it every day, and I, I wasn't necessarily in charge of that. Okay. It's true that for many years I was the one who got up and dressed mother every morning. Yeah. And it was bliss. So from that simplicity became one quite complicated and uh, time-consuming pujari duty. And how that grew that you had energy for so many years to do it. So, um, yeah, so I met Babaji. He showed me, Gauri Devi told me about the simple one. And yet I also learned more elaborate. And so right off the get-go, when I returned in 81 to my home, I made a big altar and started doing RT. Full. Uh, yeah, full RT. 
and people would come to my home. Mm -hmm. and, um, and at that time, I was doing also a small fire. Some, sometimes, I can't remember all the time, but uh -huh. it's just my love. I think early on, like I said, I just understood. What would you do if God came to your house? You clean everything up. You make some nice food. Actually, it's very practical. It's very practical. You always keep your space clean. Yeah. And, uh, and, and you uh, sing, sing every dance, and you yeah. can wash their feet if they've come a long way. Mm -hmm. And it's beautiful. One woman was Pujari um, in our temple in Preston for some time. And when she left, she got a job in an old folks, a woman, you know, uh -huh. and she was washing their feet and putting their nylon stockings on and their shoes because they could no longer bend over. And she realized she learned how to do that with so much love oh my and God. intention. That's touching. Yes, I mean, and that's what. It's not just, you know, God doesn't need it. The Lord, he doesn't need it. Uh, it's you more, need it. You need it, and we need to spread it to the whole world. So that every moment, just like Baba said, the whole ashram is my body. So every time we were washing the floor, sweeping the leaves, we're doing it to Baba. We're doing puja to Baba. That's a puja. Puja is everywhere. Yeah, everything is puja. Everything if you do it good. with a prayer, if you do yes. it with consciousness. Yes, yes, yes. And so, yeah, because uh, some people that are became Pujaris and Pujarinis realized that they got certain power, that they felt certain power in it. And then they kind of become so attached to it that they were holding positions, you know, and not letting other people <laughs> participate in any way. Or And that is a, like kind of a challenge to be stuck in a power that is not yours, but you kind of, how to say, you kind of start possessing it thinking that it's you or something like that. I don't mean you, like somebody, anybody. And that, that is a challenge. And then this other thing that you are actually channeling the energy that is materializing for everybody is a, is a good thing. Mm -hmm. But how to overcome this challenge of, um, how to say, being very special because because I, I kind of have a feeling that many people go through this. You know, people need to do what they're doing. You yeah. know, and if that's the way they they go. You didn't have this. I'm sure I have lots of pride in all my stuff, but I can tell you. That no, but I mean, but particularly yeah. this. No, you didn't I'm, go through this. Uh, I love. I, I did it. I love it. You just love it. it to this it. day, I love it. I can't do so much because of my health. Yeah. Get up in the early morning, but when I I do a few only a few mornings a week, and I mm -hmm. do I just almost just weep at how much I love. Oh, wonderful! Singing and dancing to Mother, I read the I know the Satvasati in English by heart. So I read oh really? Oh Mother. Oh okay. yes. Thou art the moonlight, Mother. Thou alone shines as the pure light of the sun. The radiance of the stars is your reflection. You know, just going on and on like that. Oh, it's wonderful. Sing. It's so wonderful. It's just bliss. And I can tell you, it wasn't too much, you know, some years after being Pujari lots, um, there came a time when we were building, I don't remember, and there was like six men living at the ashram or something. We were all sleeping in the yurt, you know, electricity or plumbing in the yurt at that time. Mm -hmm. And we were all sleeping in there. Um, but one man wasn't so built for the heavy work we were doing at the time. And, um, but he loved being Pujan. Mm -hmm. um, and we needed a cook to make bread. Uh, several of these people were European. You needed and, something and, else. And they needed, yeah. they loved the bread. So I let him, you know, train him to be Pujari. And he did a beautiful job. And I became the cook. Uh -huh. and, but I, you know, I realized it's not different. It's not different. It's That's not, what I, what it's I was not as, It's not as romantic. Oh, so. You know, you know, to have to be scrubbing dishes and things like that. But when I was, you know, when I really realized it, I knew it was the same. I was the same. Cooking, serving people. Mm -hmm. Same, same. Yeah, so, you know, we all get trapped in our egos. Yeah. 
what to do. Yeah. Love the people and, and help them realize that they're wonderful, whether they're the pujari or the cook or the cleaning person, babasitta. Every person should be willing to do any kind of task. Mm -hmm. When you know somebody of more high stature is willing to you know, clean the toilets or something like that, they set a good example that it's all God's work and it's all Baba's body. Yeah, this this I realize that it is kind of a challenging because uh, many people like to do the work that they like, but many times we need uh, a work that they don't like, <laughs> and it's just not possible to do only what you like. And uh, it's kind of sadhana to do what you don't like, mm -hmm. because sometimes it's really hard mentally. To, uh, there, there is a good reason why people, some people avoid some things, other people avoid other things. They have to go through some mental obstacles or something. But is it a good sadhana, right? It's just not easy to communicate, sorry, but you would have to do this. <laughs> you know why. We, well, need, we actually need this. Exactly. I mean, I mean, it's good, you know, if you know somebody is a very good painter, yeah. then it's good to put their skills to work painting yeah. in a temple, yeah. you know, so you find out their skills, but you're right. But right now, uh, you know, the bathroom's day cleaning. Yes. Please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, you know, I'll go, to, you know, we all have to go do that ourselves. Helping. I love that about community life because everybody do part of the work and then you, you're like a rich person, you have everything and you did just a little part of it. It's, it's, it's a wonderful feeling, I think. It's, it's a, a such a beautiful thing of the, the community to have that. Even just singing Arti out here these last few nights, mm. you know, either you or Omar playing the harmonium and Pujari's here and everybody's playing the different clapping and singing. I just feel like we're one body. Mm. And it's such a power when people come and sing together. It's, yeah. it's amazing. Yeah. Or it's same, like with work, same, same with working same together. Same with working together. Exactly. Yeah, that's beautiful. And I want for the end to ask you, do you miss Babaji in the body? Because you told me you, I have to remind you to tell me a story about it. When we ask Guruji about it, you say you remind me about it. I have something to tell you about it. Uh, do you miss him in the body? Do you wait for him? Do you pray for him to come in the body? How how do you feel about that? Oh oh, I know the story. Okay, good. Okay, so, but um, it was 1981. And Babaji was just starting to say, um, now it's time to go on the television and tell my, my, my teachings. Because for a long time he didn't let people record his talk when he did speak a little mm -hmm. bit or to write books about him too much and things like that. Mm -hmm. And now it's time to talk about truth, simplicity, and love, and karma yoga. And I'm thinking, I'm sitting with inner hearing and I'm thinking, oh, I think I can go on the television. <laughs> Uh, it's scary, or on the radio. But I had been doing slideshows, you know, with a slide with a slide projector at my children's schools, trying to get volunteers to come in and show people. Oh, you could come in and read to children. Oh, you could come in oh, and bring well, your, so nice. your fire truck and let the children see the fire truck. So oh. I was doing, that, and I found that very easy because it's dark, and you could even have a little script here if you need. Shapes of it. But uh, I could do slideshows around about poverty. I just bought a camera in Hong Kong on the way over. So you, were, you were always this camera person then. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was the first camera I owned. But um, I was out of film in 1981 using my film in Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. But so I said to somebody, you know, I was talking, oh, I wish I had some film so I could take pictures to do a slideshow. Mm -hmm. And they oh, go ask Babaji, he has everything. Because everybody brought him everything. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I said, Baba, <laughs> do you have a slide projector? <laughs> I don't know, here's a film I could. Uh, and, um, and he said, yeah, yeah, it is. And he ran in his room and brought out a couple of rolls. And it wasn't just film, it was slide film. So mm -hmm. it was all right. So anyway, 
So that's at the stage where as I was to, about to leave, I said to Baba, may I come with you over here to the Gufu side? Because it was still water too high mm -hmm. to cross the river alone, because mm -hmm. it was monsoon season. And, uh, and plus we were supposed to be doing our karma yoga. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I asked him, I said, would you take me over when you go? <gasps> you know, this afternoon. He said, yes, yes, I'm with you. And so he sent somebody to get me in. And we were walking the river bottom, and he gave coffees here, and some payment here to people. And, um, and then all of a sudden, you know, with the different groups, and he said, no, 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 make the bridge over this way, or this, you know, giving direction. And finally we come to the edge of the river, and there's a big stone right there, and he said, you sit here. And I just thought he was going to go talk to more people about things. I sat there. All of a sudden, he was on the other side of the river. Oh, without me. Well, two, three people that were also coming with him. Mm -hmm. I couldn't believe it. And I just started crying, you know. Um, I went into my pity story. Uh, he doesn't love me. <laughs> he forgot me. If I was an important devotee. <laughs> and by God's grace, I came into some wisdom and said, Ramanji, if he said to sit on the stone, you sit. Oh, no, on this stone, so I actually sat there. And in that quiet time, sitting there with the river going by, I felt Babaji, love, heart, come into my heart. Oh, and feel it so much that it was like, it would explode. And um, so in that sense, um, he's never left. And I never left. So, you know, because shortly after I left India for, you know, yeah. until the next day. So, and then shortly after, I, you know, he left his body. Okay. So, you know, that's how it feels for me. And uh, I often tell people that, new people, they, oh, honey. I said, no, you have love in your dreams and your meditation and your heart. So many of us are so attached to his body. Mm -hmm. And that's not what it was about. I often feel yeah. that's why he left his body. Yes. Yeah. Not to be distracted with exactly. his body. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And when I would ask him questions, a few I didn't ask many, but a few that I would, he'd just look at me. He never answered. <laughs> and all I heard was go inside, Ramla, oh. to go inside where the true guru lives. Mm. In the space of your soul, your heart. Mm. And so, no, I love, I feel Baba, I love Baba. Sometimes I think I would be scared if you showed up. <laughs> like, particularly, I'm walking out, and, you know, we have 101 acres of land, and it's night and dark, pitch dark. I think, ooh, I'm going be scared if Cousin Baba appeared. I'm like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but, um, but I do also pray that he comes back. Uh -huh. Because I think we all need him so much. Mm -hmm. That's why. Mm -hmm. for, for everybody to have that. This kind of darshan. Exactly. In the material exactly. world. Yeah. Just we need, we need to be straightened out for weakness. Mm -hmm. So, so no, for my personal feeling, I love Baba and he's here and that's wonderful. For all of us, mess we've made of the world and everything. Maybe that's your ah. <laughs> <laughs> So, does that answer your question? Yes, I only don't understand how will he work on the mess more if he's in the body than now when he's not in the body the mess, because mm -hmm. it's omnipotent, omnipresent. So, yeah. coming to the body to clean the mess or not coming to the body and cleaning the mess uh, i just don't understand it's a mystery i don't but i don't i don't i think what you're is the difference I am, between these two i absolutely think you're absolutely correct no idea but uh, yeah but, but it's as, nice you share both aspects but as you 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 feel him without the body and you were happy but if he would come with the body you would also be very happy well i just think he i think most of us in this relative world, in these bodies, um, obviously he came from 70 to 84 yeah. for a reason, yeah. to wake up people. Yeah. 
perhaps we can be more woke in us. Yeah. But still the world is, was a mess while he was here and continues. Mm -hmm. I don't understand the way of, the God, of God, for yeah. sure. There's some, some beautiful parts in this you know, new book by um, Vijay Gupta mm -hmm. and talks about that, you know, Baba, is, the divine is so big that these little things like you know, our little petty things, oh, you know, some people, he says, he said, it seemed like we thought that, you know, there was ashram starting around India to him and around, around the world, that surely he would not leave. But his words were, you know, some of this vastness is taking care of the whole cosmos, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. At night, sometimes he would be sleeping in his feet and one time he, he didn't drink his milk, so he w was trying to wake him to give him some milk, and there was no body in the bed. Mm -hmm. And when he asked him the next day, right. and Baba said, never touch me when I'm going to sleep. Mm -hmm. So he's dealing with so much. Mm -hmm. Not a few of these other things that I don't understand. I don't even understand why he came or how the heck I got to be with him. <laughs> <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> Who cares why? Yeah. Or why I get to be here mm. doing this with you, yeah. coming in Ashram, being with all these wonderful people who are searching. Mm. So, Thank you very, this. very much. Is there anything you would like to add? No. Okay. I'm Holly Papa Sintai Ramlosi. I'm very happy for this and I'm sure it will be very inspirational for many people. I just pray you time.